Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold and S&P fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 22nd of July. I hope you all had a great trading week and before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this content with your fellow trading colleagues if you like the content that I provide every week. So um, getting into really just uh, one trade this week, some trade analysis, and it was on the Euro Aussie. And um, yeah, Euro Aussie, really the reason why I am uh, short on this fundamentally is because of interest rate divergences. So you've got the European Central Bank who are likely to cut rates in September, whereas the Reserve Bank of Australia uh, may not cut this year, maybe into next year. In fact, there's a small chance that they could hike this year, depending on what inflation, uh, how inflation comes out. So um, there are interest rate differentials there. And so um, managed to get in actually on all three positions. So uh, this Prices came up to a supply zone, kind of spiked through it on the Thursday and uh, managed to get in one position at um, 1.622. And then uh, what I typically do is um, split the trade up into three and increase the position size as well. So uh, my stop loss was at uh, 1.632. To five, and so right now on each of these um, uh, positions, uh, I have I have been triggered. So prices pulled back on the Friday, triggering me into all three positions. Uh, they were sell limit orders, and now just looking at um, uh, seeing if I can uh, manage the trade. Now, how I, how I will manage the trade is by um, see the uh, top position that I've been triggered in on the Friday. Um, I will go for a one-to-one -one on that, yeah, so because I am at 0.3% uh, on that uh, position, if uh, if it hits a one-to-one, -one, then it would have covered uh, the other two positions, which are at 0.2 and 0.1%, so then this becomes a break-even trade, right, so now, um, if I, once I hit get to break even then I can't lose from this trade then I can manage the two trades as I see fit and try and uh, swing trade them and hold them uh, until they get to uh, maybe somewhere around close to the uh, bottom of this uh, whole area right here maybe the 106 sorry 1.606 area uh, and, but we'll see but that's really the plan um, and how to how managing this trade so um, so yeah, that was really the only trade I got into this week. Um, uh, yeah, so let's get into the week ahead and uh, looking at what's coming up in the news. And in the United States, key highlights will include the advanced uh, second quarter GDP growth rate, PCE inflation and personal spending and income. Additionally, other notable releases will feature the S&P Global Manufacturing and Services PMI Durable Goods Orders and existing home sales. Globally, Manufacturing and Services PMI data will be published for Australia, Japan, Germany, the Euro area and the United Kingdom. Germany will also see the release of its LFO Business Climate and GFK Consumer Confidence Indices. Uh, the Bank of Canada and People's Bank of China will uh, set are set to announce their interest rate decisions, and that comes from Trading Economics. So, lots of uh, news coming out this week, potentially market moving news. So let's now go to the uh, U.S. dollar equally weighted index to see what the dollar is doing against uh, all of the other currencies that we kind of trade it against and um, if you want to know more about the equally weighted index if you go to the top right hand side you'll see a link um, and uh, click on that link and then you'll be able to uh, understand why I use the equally weighted index rather than the DXY or the USDX and how to uh, calculate it and put it on your trading view charts if you're trading with trading view so um, the dollar uh, has really kind of uh, come down this week but grinded higher so it's really entered into uh, what i would call an auction or a range fair value auction 
um, and you so this week pretty much prices have kind of stayed within this this uh, this range here now um, I think the dollar is more of a sell yeah but uh, I wasn't looking to uh, take a, sh a short trade at a low so really um, short trades probably right now uh, is is a decent um, uh, would be decent uh, at the moment in terms of timing but I'm looking for that fresher area of, uh, of of supply if it does come up to this area here as well as some other um, indicators that I use uh, privately uh, to kind of just get me into uh, into trades or at least indicate that <clears throat> prices are at a potential um, expensive area right and so um, uh, fundamentally though the traders uh, add to bets on three fed rate cuts in 2024 swaps briefly price in more than 60 percent of a third move in 2024 expectations remain short of where uh, they begin or where they began this year so um, it says here that traders added to bets that the Federal Reserve will cut rates three times this year after Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated said conditions were ripe for easing. So two quarter point rate cut, re re sorry, rate reductions are fully priced for uh, in for 2024 with market implied odds of third cut reaching about 60% on Monday. The first move is widely expected in September, though, uh, Goldman Sachs economists said they see uh, solid rationale for officials to lower rates as soon as July. Now, um, if you go to the CME uh, FedWatch tool, you'll see that July, let me just move this up a little bit, FedWatch tool, right? So you'll see July, um, the, the market is really uh, priced in the probability 95% chance of a no change, right? So um, I don't think there's going to be um, uh, any kind of uh, ease. Uh, you've, got, you've got a very low possibility of an ease in, in July, although Goldman Sachs may think that there is that. And, and again, it could increase between, I think it's now in July the 31st, um, you know, that could increase dramatically. If it does, then the dollar will... Um, uh, move to the downside quite drastically because the market has to price that in, right? Or, or will be pricing that in. But the next uh, three cuts potentially are uh, that that have been priced in already uh, are September the eighteenth, and it's ninety eight point one percent chance. And then you've got uh, sorry November the seventh, which is nine and ninety nine point two percent chance and as well as december so that's a 99 percent chance at the moment so there are actually three cuts priced into the market these can change depending on data as well so just be mindful of that but um let's see what happens i do think that any pullbacks on the dollar are, are now likely to be uh shorting opportunities um so let's see what happens there uh, looking at the dollar yen and the dollar yen this week, the yen uh, had some inflation news, which was hold on one second. Let me just find it. Um, uh, Japan's inflation speeds up, keeping Bank of Japan uh, rate hike in play, phasing out of utilities sub subsidies pushed up energy prices inflation stays above the bank of japan's two percent target for 27 straight months japan's inflation accelerated for a second month in june leaving the door uh, open for central bank officials to consider raising interest rates when they gather to set policy at the end of the month and so hotter prices will give the central bank a reason to mull a rate hike at the policy board meeting that concludes on the 31st of July. Uh, one in three Bank of Japan watchers expects the bank to raise rates in July, according to a Bloomberg survey last month. So price pressures are remaining. The odds of a, um, a rate hike, according to Bloomberg uh, the Economists, uh, last month was about at around 33% now. Um, even if they hike rates, I don't think really it's enough to really push the um, the yen a lot uh, lower. I think that there's there's still lots of differentials between and the gap between the U.S. and um, the uh, 
the, the, the Bank of Japan's um, and the yen and the dollar really is is too much and too wide for I think investors to really care. And that's what the carry trade is really about. That's the reason why you're seeing you know, the dollar kind of uh, strengthened a little bit this week, as I think because it's been, first of all, cuts have been priced in to the dollar already. And also as well, I don't think that there's, there is going to be uh, any kind of rate cuts. And even if there is, again, it's going to be quite minimal. So I do think that the yen, if it does pull back, I think anything down into these areas should be nice uh, buying opportunities. If you do want to be a buyer of the yen, no, then... Uh, what you want to do is look for these supply zones in and around this area, these areas here. So uh, those are really the two uh, areas to look for short trades on the yen. The US dollar, Swiss franc trade or pair. Uh, we've got a nice demand zone here. In fact, we've got demand right there. We can drop bridge right from there. Right, yeah, that's that's where it goes demand and then you've got another demand zone from uh, here so um, <clears throat> in terms of again in for interest rate differentials and cutting cycles I think the dollar still has a bit more of an edge um, any pullbacks I think should be buying opportunities um, if it does come down to that zone or if it comes down to the, uh, the fresher area of demand. Again, reason being is because the Swiss franc is still cutting rates. The Swiss National Bank is still cutting rates. Um, and I think that, again, actually I know that the market has already priced in um, all of the cuts for the dollar. So I don't think the dollar should weaken too much when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to uh, any kind of devaluation. So I do think that any... Uh, Pullback should be nice buying opportunities. I do think though that this level has been touched once, twice already. So uh, maybe wait for some sort of either stop hunt or a move back down into this area here before looking at going long. If you are, if you do choose to go long, if you're looking to go short, then uh, a nice technical level is going to be within this supply zone right there. So that's supply, and uh, you'd wait for prices to come into this zone before. Uh, looking to buy the Swiss franc <clears throat> against the dollar, but not really a pair that I would short. Uh, the uh, dollar CAD and the dollar CAD, um, you're looking at, uh, I think personally, I'd really rather be a buyer uh, at the moment, and that's depending upon if the Bank of Canada do cut this week, so their decision is out this week. And so... Um, if they end up cutting, then you're likely to see continued upside, I think. If you're looking at um, uh, buying the Canadian dollar, really, I would say based on the fact that if they don't cut rates and they hold rates this uh, this uh, this week, then there could be some downside potential. So what you'd want to see is really, you might see prices um you know, bounce off of this supply zone and move to the downside because I think the market is pricing in rate cuts uh, for the Canadian dollar. Um, but again, if, if if the market gets surprised by the Bank of Canada, then you're likely to see uh, a move to the downside. So you're going to see what's that? That's that Wednesday. Is that Wednesday? Uh, yeah, so Wednesday, the 24th, Bank of Canada monetary policy decision. So if you think that they're going to uh, cut rates then you should be expecting prices to move higher if they hold rates then prices should move to the downside uh, pound dollar and so the pound dollar has been on a bit of a tear and um, why is that the the main reason for that is that the uh, pound has been doing better than expected and also there has been um uh, some some news here that says sticky UK services inflation adds to August rate cut doubts. So traders pair back bets on easing as key indicator stays high. So data data further complicates Bank of England calculus ahead of August meeting. So Britain recorded stronger than expected inflation in its services sector in June, prompting traders to walk back bets on an interest rate cut by the Bank of England next month. So services inflation which policymakers have been watching for signs of continued domestic price pressures 
held steady at 5.7% for the second straight month. That compares with the 5.6% rate expected by economists immediately before the data release and the 5.1% level that the central bank's most recent forecast had anticipated by now. So basically, in services inflation is uh, remaining very stubborn. And so if it does, and it's a component that the Bank of England uh, are continuing to watch, um, then the uh, Bank of England may look to hold rates rather than cut rates, which is basically appreciating the pound, right? So that's what the market is kind of pricing in. Now we've pulled back um, and let's see if they do end up uh, holding rates. If they do hold rates, I would probably say the pound is still um, a decent buy, right? Um, uh, at either of those two levels. If they do cut rates, I think then that would definitely surprise the market. And then we could actually get a sustained move to the downside. So um, that's really where we are in terms of uh, buying and selling the, uh, the, the pounds. So the pound at the moment did come up into uh, just above this, this supply zone. Move right here. So there's supply. And then you've got another supply zone right here. So um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see this week um, what happens um, in in the coming future. But um, not really a pair I'm kind of interested in, really, because I think if I'm buying the pound, then it's going to be uh, there's weaker pairs to, to, to buy the pound against. So... Um, that's where I am with the pound dollar, pound yen, pound yen pulled back to a decent daily demand zone. It looks like right here. And then we've had a move to the upside again, even though the uh, the yen are hiking rates. The difference between the interest rate differential between the two uh, hopefully should support the pound. But um, let's see. I think your two options, two immediate options at the moment are going to be in this area here so it's either you're looking to buy right now on a little bit of a pullback or you're looking at the uh, moves to the downside uh, down into maybe the 200s um, uh, before looking at going long if you are looking to short the uh, pound yen then you're looking at that supply area there or the higher zone right here so uh, yeah, decent technical levels, nice fresh areas of demand to look for uh, trades in and around there. Uh, Euro dollar, so the Euro dollar has been grinding higher. Um, and I do think that the uh, there is supposed to be, I say it's supposed to be, but uh, a limit, right? A lot of uh, banks are actually a bit more bearish on the uh, uh, Euro dollar than the um uh, they're not so um, with the dollar really kind of uh, in the market pricing in a dollar cut and free free cuts already I think if we are to move and to grind higher it's really going to be based on the expectation that the um, the ECB may not cut rates in September so We've seen here that Lagarde uh, had a speech this, oh, I think it was on Thursday, Lagarde says ECB September rate meeting is wide open. So Christine Lagarde said the European Central Bank's next interest rate meeting is wide open, hinting that another cut is possible as officials will have significantly more information on inflation by then. She said officials had been scrutinizing the three crucial elements underpinning their inflation outlook wage growth corporate profit margins and productivity and will have a lot more of that in the coming weeks and months if that data actually confirms this inflationary process that is at work in the moment uh, it will reinforce our confidence in returning consumer price growth to the 2% goal in late 2025 as currently envisaged the guard told journalists in Frankfurt so now we know exactly what the central bank is looking at and what data were uh, the central bank is looking at to cut rates so I get this question quite a lot in terms of you know what data should we be looking at and it does change right but the central bank will tell you typically will tell you what date what specific data they are looking at in order to cut rates so there's no need to really kind of trade around 
uh, any other data, um, uh, the main data to, to trade around now, if it's shorting the euro or buying the euro, is going to be wage growth, corporate profit margins, um, and uh, and productivity, right? That data, they're saying, confirms disinflationary process. So what's the point in looking at, you know, uh, home building or retail sales? It's not going to affect the market because it's not going to affect what the central bank uh, and their decision on whether they're going to be cutting rates so um, or not in September. So you've got the plan now. That's what you need to look for. And um, and you trade based on that data rather than just looking at random data and sitting at the computer um, wasting your time right on 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 things that you shouldn't necessarily be wasting your time on. So um, uh, that's pretty much really the analysis. There is a demand zone, a couple of demand zones here. So if you do want to be a buyer of the uh, of the euro, I think now could be decent but i still think it's quite on the high side and the expensive side uh, so if you were looking to buy the euro i would look to really buy the euro down at least and a pull back a deeper pull back into the 1.082 to uh, 1.08 level before looking at going long um euro yen and the euro yen uh, there was a bit of a demand zone which it kind of pierced through so I'm going to draw a demand zone from here to here. I'll leave that for now. Um, I think if you're looking to buy the uh, the euro uh, over the yen, you can look for pull back into that zone there. Um, if you're looking to buy the yen over the euro, then any pullbacks into this area here should be decent for a uh, for some trade opportunities. So that's where you would be looking for prices to move into um euro pound so i've fundamentally been sh trying to get short on this but there's been no pullbacks i've been waiting for a pullback up into this zone um but there was nothing so unfortunately no trades but the trade ha has worked out um let me just move that all the way down here so yeah i do think if prices pull back to this uh, 0 0.85 area I think that's going to be a very nice zone and price to look for some short trades, um, especially if the Bank of England don't cut rates um, in, in August and they look to cut in September. So let's see uh, where uh, this leads. But I would be more inclined to go short here. Um, I mean, you could look for buying opportunities if you wanted to. And again, that would be with the belief that uh, the European Central Bank are going to hold rates in September because if they do, then in fact you might see in fact you know prices move maybe beyond that zero point eight five uh, cent area. Uh, Euro Aussie, uh, Euro Aussie, uh, Australian dollar, US dollar um, pullback on this should be decent a decent buying opportunity again if you're looking at interest rate differentials the australian dollar are one of the last if not the last central bank to look to uh cut rates so i think anywhere within this zone should be nice now uh, if you do want to look for support and resistance within that zone i think you've got some areas of resistance there support resistance and then you've got little bits of resistance within here. So, yeah, that lines up quite nicely. If you are looking for a nice pullback, I think down into the 0 0.666 area is decent for um, a buy trade. If you're looking to buy the US dollar, then you're looking for a pullback up into this supply zone right here. Uh, looking at gold and gold pulling back uh quite aggressively but i do think that the um the path of this resistance is still to the upside um you can look for actually trades right now because that does constitute as a demand zone this whole area will constitute as a demand zone reason being is because you're making higher highs and higher lows here right you've got high low high right so that's really where you want to look to trade so you could look for a trade actually right now that also coincides with a nice little support and resistance area where you've got resistance there, bit of support there as well. So that all lines up quite nicely. Or you can look for a little bit more of a trade down at these lows, a position to take. 
if it comes down into that zone with confluence so yeah if you're buying the dollar then you want to obviously sell gold um but with uh the with the interest rates uh coming i do think that gold is more of a buy also as well in fact i did forget to um to, to mention that um, there is the uh, the Trump effect with the dollar. So the dollar actually could strengthen going into uh, the end of the year uh, if 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 rate cuts have already been priced in. Um, the the market feel that if Donald Donald Trump get in does get in and it does look like at the moment he will um, that it will be positive for the dollar. So in fact we could see a deeper pullback. Um, on gold and in fact um, on the dollar index we could actually see uh, prices move to the upside I think if you if we do start to see you know the dollar move to the upside um, quite aggressively then or at least if it, if it passes and goes through certain supply zones then it's likely that the market is looking and focusing more on the Donald Trump narrative than it is on the um the uh, interest rate differentials so just be mindful of that and also as well the S&P so the S&P pulling back as it should really it's been you know making moves without no major pullback so I personally think that the S&P is definitely uh, due for a pullback to fair value where could fair value be from the low to the high uh, fair value is 50% of that so probably somewhere around this area here yeah so maybe the uh five three uh five three yeah maybe five three two area right so somewhere around here uh it could be due for a nice pullback um before we get to um the elections so don't be surprised if it starts to take out um more traders and more traders and then we get down to around here before um uh moving to the upside but course i could be wrong but if you are looking to buy the uh, and take some trades then yeah definitely these demand zones are decent um uh, for looking at long trades there was a couple of um, banks that were saying that a five to ten percent pullback should be decent so a five percent pullback would take you into this uh the five four zero somewhere around here so that could be one and then a 10% pullback in fact may take you all the way down into uh, a nice big discount area 80% discounts um, on the overall range so that would be where you want to potentially start to look for uh, to look for trades in fact that's the other way around it should really be um, from the uh one second uh, 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 uh. Sit here. oh i actually should have done it wrong again haven't i um no here we go all right so it should be from really these eight eighty percent discounts is what you're looking for but of course um for me i'm really just going to be a buyer of the s p i'm not necessarily looking to short this anytime soon unless um the uh the the, the rate cuts for the dollar get priced out of the market so if if there's data that comes in and inflation is stubborn or it's rising then i think that would be more of a sustained move to the downside and that that would be give me a reason to want to go short whereas this could just be a pullback so um on pullbacks i'd rather be a buyer uh so that's really where i am with the s and p at the moment so yeah that's it for this week uh i hope you enjoyed the analysis uh i hope you have a great trading week too take care and all the best until next week